What's up guys, I'm here with Amratmo and we are in Kibera, which is the biggest slum in the world in Kenya. In this video, we're gonna be exploring all over Kibera, showing you the ins and outs of the people, the culture, the lifestyle. Hopefully you guys enjoy watching. Let's go check it out, man. Welcome to Kenya! Amazing. Holy crap! Wow, I'm very inspired by your work. Fresh and delicious. We're entering another part of the slum, which is controlled by gangs. Is it dangerous? Nobody's going to attack you. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Did you grow up in this community? Yes, I was brought up. I was born here. Right. This house. In this house? Yes. What is it like to live here? Uh, living here, I cannot say it's hell. It's a, it's a game. Depending on which side of life you want to look at, uh, at it from. As you look from here, all these areas. When I was growing up, we only had one toilet around here. For all these people? Yes. And how many people are here? Approximately 400 or 500. One toilet for 500 people? Yes. Wow. But nowadays, it's because of the government has tried to empower us. So in each around uh, 50 meters, you find one or two. But at that our time, it used to be flying toilet. Flying toilet is that uh, you take a paper bag, you pee, then you throw and uh, whenever it lands, you should not know. Is it generally safe here? Yeah, I'm not saying the all of this is safe, but most of the parts are safe. Hi, nice to meet you. Yes, I'm Kennedy. I'm Drew. This is your shop? I have my shop there, but this is my friend's butcher. So tell me what it's like to live in Kibra. In Kibra, life is not easy as well. Here in Islam, we have most of them are poor people and they're trying to grow up with the different challenges. So people do work, they have small businesses. Just small business. That's good, because in other slums in the world, they don't work. Here in Kibra, it's good because they are doing their own businesses. What's your business? Main bone jewelry. I will take, take you there. Okay. So this is our soap. We are a team making jewelry out of bones. What kind of bones? These are domestic bones. Cow, goat, sheep and, sheep and camel. We buy from slaughtering houses. Then we bring them here. We start our activity. This is just leg part of the body. Cow? Only a cow. Oh. So we remove the bone marrow. We boil it there and we remain with this one. We cut into pieces with this machine here next to you. Mm -hmm. And this guy now doing smoothing. How many people work here in your business? We are 17, but we divided into two because of railway line demolish our, our big workshop next oh. here. It's really cool to see how they're just using bones of an animal, which normally would get thrown away in a trash can somewhere. But here they're using it to make it a business. That's really cool, man. Yes. Final product is here. Pretty incredible. I'm very inspired by your work. This is the biggest slum in the world. Yes. Uh, most people live, let's say, they live below $2 a day. Everyone? Most a higher population. That's why I say it's one of the poorest slums. Even though the government is doing something, you see, this is water being supplied. Oh, that's water up yeah, there? Yeah, we lifted it up to avoid the theft. Wow, these are water pipes. That's yeah, so interesting. Water. When you came here in 2017, you can tell that there were no roads. Now you see that there are roads. As we were walking, he's telling me that we're entering another part of the slum, which is controlled by gangs, right? Yes. It's called Katwekera. So we need to be careful. We need to choose a local from there that's going to take us around? Yeah, we have to get one. Is it dangerous? No, it's not dangerous. Yeah, Nobody is going to attack you. See, we just entered the gang area. Yeah, videos enter. We need to interact with people carefully. Sure. What do you think about this street? It's a little bit different from uh, other parts of Nairobi, for sure. It's definitely different. Yeah, it's one, like, one of the most feared neighborhoods of Nairobi. Feared? Yeah. As she says, we're in one of the most feared neighborhoods in all of Nairobi, as yeah. Susan just told me. Rakmo just went to go grab a gang, a gang member to be with us for safety reasons. Okay, we got our guy. How are you? Don't shoot. I was asked to turn off my camera because the gang is giving us the evil eye. We gotta get permission from the gang dudes. After 10 minutes of discussion and a payment, we are good to go as long as they follow behind us. So this street is crazy. So there's like a railroad track and then it just cuts through the slum. There's people living left and right. Are there trains coming every day? Yes. So what happens when the train comes? We move. In this area here, there is everything, every wood that you want. You want to buy a TV? Yeah. 
radio, yeah. new phone, it's like a street. Do you know the singer, Sean Paul? Yes. So he came to perform in Kenya like a couple of years ago, and then he lost his phone. Guess where they found it? Here. They found it here. <laughs> Sean Paul, if you're watching this, we got your phone, bro. So, so even yours, you keep it well? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to keep it in my pocket, but it's hard for me to not film. It's hard you give it to me. Yeah. They don't snatch from their own men. Susan, I think I found Sean Paul's phone. Yeah, could be. That's right there. This one. Oh no, that's the case. If you're in Kenya and you get your phone stolen, there's a good chance it's here in Kibera. Look. If you need any cords for your phone, this guy's got you covered. Hey. How much are these phones? Like this one right here. You can bargain. You can bargain. He said the price is 3000 but you can bargain. <laughs> Why are they going so fast? Because they are feeling that they are looking. Here are some toilets here for 10 shillings. You can use the bathroom. But the problem is people aren't paying for it, right? Uh, yeah. The train is coming right now. This is insane that all these people are walking on the train track and the train is coming. coming. You can literally see it. Nobody is bothering to move out of the train tracks. Holy crap. The amount of dust in my eyes. Like literally, if you don't move out of the way, you will literally die. Oh. The train literally pulls up, people get on and get off, and then they go about their day. What do you think about this train coming every day? It almost kills people when it comes in. Yeah, if you are not careful, it will kill you. Just normal everyday life? No, today no. Why? The driver was very careful. Oh, he was careful. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say he wasn't careful. Yeah, he was very careful. He was careful. <laughs> What do you think about that? Uh, this is the best and the cheapest means of transport around here. I came here back in 2017 and I don't remember there being many public toilets, but I've seen a lot. So there's been a lot of changes here in the last five years. In 2017, you could realize the railway line, the houses were up to this area. Yes. It was very narrow. Right now, they have done some uh, expansion. You see the houses over there, the one with the red roofs over yes. there? So the government was trying to do like a slum upgrade and move people from the shacks into those houses. And then the people who were moved there by the government, they moved out of the shacks and they, of the houses and then they rented them to middle class people and they went back to, the, to their shacks. So now they're collecting rents from those houses. Those people country. are smart. Yeah, they're very smart, right? This place is so bizarre. There's just so much action. Everywhere you look, there's things happening. What's cool about Kibera is that there's business everywhere. There's people innovating, making things. Nobody's really sitting around doing nothing. The, the people are working. Hi, how are you? Where's the good street food? Street food. You are going to I buy you. Uh, number one, the sexuality that is 100% good for your, for your stomach. Why? The population is high, so that food that was cooked must be consumed the whole, that, the whole of that. Water is fresh. Water is fresh? Yeah. Initially, we used to have contaminated water. Yeah. But right now you see this water clean, the one you have seen overhead clean, piping, I think it's no longer an issue. Chapati. Fresh and delicious. Yes. Like the Somali cut. Yeah, like the Somali Really? Well, you, you know. Yeah, that's from Somalia, bro. Know, it's, yeah. This one, meditation. That's why I went to college. Are you sure? That's why you went to college. Yeah. He's shy. Yeah, he's too shy. But as happy as everyone seems, the sad reality is that life in Kibera is hard. This railway is very dangerous. I mean, if you fall, you go through the cracks. School kids walk over this, these wooden planks, over the railway tracks, over a bridge. It is not a clean place. As you can see, there's trash everywhere. Here, there. Minimum wage is less than $2 per day. Nobody has health care and education is limited. What are some of the challenges of living here? Many tell you, we don't have water, we don't have money to sustain ourselves, we don't have school to detain our children, no projects. Why doesn't the government help you? We are in opposition. Yeah. Government help those people who, yeah. who elected you. We are just alive. Right. Yeah. You can see, like, as the sun starts to go down, it gets really crowded around here. Everybody's walking around. Over here, you can see kids hanging out and sliding down the hill, just as any kids would do anywhere in the world. What's your name? Tony. Tony? Yeah. It's a wheel. Yes. 
How old are you, Tony? 11. 11? Yes. How old do you think I am? 32. I, I am 32. Good job. What country do you think I'm from? America. Oh my God. <laughs> nice to meet you, Tony. <laughs> Have a nice day. Asante sana. Asante sana, karibu. Bye bye. What an eye-opening experience to walk around Kibera. It's been amazing. The people here are really friendly and that's the biggest takeaway from coming here is that yes, it's dangerous. Yes, it's a big slum, but at the end of the day, they're just people hustling, working and enjoying their lives. So thank you for being here with me. Subscribe if you want to see more stories from every country in the world. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. If you enjoyed this video, please comment your thoughts down below. I'd love to hear from you. Subscribe to this channel for more awesome travels. And also I'm giving away a free digital version of my top 100 best travel photos of all time. All you have to do is click the link below and sign up for my free email newsletter and you'll be sent this straight to your inbox. Thank you guys. Stay safe, be spontaneous, and just go.